Hi, this is Ibadi in Action. Welcome again to the Candid Frame YouTube channel. Uh, first off, I want to thank all the new subscribers who found their way here as a result of a shout out by my friend Ted Forbes, a fellow podcaster. He has a fantastic podcast called The Art of Photography, which if you haven't been checking it out on the, on YouTube, you, you, you should. He provides so much information uh, on some really iconic and legendary photographers that you may or may not be familiar with. And I love the time that he did. He really dedicates to really exploring the work of, of some of the great photographers that are out there. And if you're looking for inspiration, there's no better place than to go to the art of photography. So uh, thanks, Ted, again. And, uh, and again, welcome to all the new subscribers. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was actually spurred by a discussion thread that was started on the Candid Frame discussion group on, on Flickr. And I'm going to read you part of this uh, message that was left by Bjorn uh, Comher. And the, he asked the question, are we all repeating the same shots over and over again? And uh, here's part of what he wrote. He says, I've been on Flickr for a few months now. And I'm starting to notice that people seem to be taking the same images over and over again. A person walking into a streak of sunlight, people walking in front of a billboard with some funny picture on it, a few young girls and boys sitting at a table in the subway on a park bench, not looking at each other but texting on their smartphones, a lady with wild hair being flashed in the face at close-up, old man with wrinkled face in black and white with exaggerated signs of age, and homeless people sitting or lying on the street. Now, a lot of these images uh, that he's describing are really kind of cliches in, in street photography, and I think, you know, most of us, if not all of us, have made them. Uh, I added something to the discussion thread that, uh, if you're interested, you can you can read there in terms of what what I think about what he wrote. But I thought that that would be a good opportunity to talk about people who are making images that are different from this and images that I think really can encourage and inspire you to do something a little more. Part of what I wrote in my, my reply to his message was the, was the thought that a lot of the images that he describes as cliche are part and parcel, sort of a part of the a process of being a street photographer. You look at the work that other people are doing and you try to emulate what you're seeing. And then I think that's one of the reasons why we see so many images with uh, people walking down the street juxtaposed uh, juxtaposed against a billboard or, um, you know, really close-up tight faces of older people and then sort of exaggerating the aged features in, in Photoshop. I think it's, it, mimicry is a big part of what happens as just a part of photography, but especially street photography. But I think at some point, you really have to move beyond that because if you don't, you're just, you're just doomed to repeat the same images over and over again. And that's something I myself struggle with every time I go out and shoot. There's certain images that I know that I could make, you know, blindfolded. And there are other images that are much more difficult for me to make. And that's one of the reasons I like going to the Flickr group that we've created here at the Candid Frame, because I get to see people making photographs that really challenge my own way of seeing. And when I take a look at those photographs, I get really excited about what they've done. And it gives me food for thought when I go out and photograph. And it and it challenges me to not make those pictures that I know I can make so easily and instead try to reserve my focus, my energy, and my time to making photographs that I think um, will take me to another level in terms of my photography. So let's take a look at the images that uh, this week I think sort of exemplify that. Here's an image that was made by uh, Thomas Danielson. He made it with a Nikon D60 with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. The exposure was F32, uh, a shutter speed of one tenth of a second, and ISO 100. And I really love this shot. Uh, it's obviously shot in a museum, and he has these static human figures that uh, have been sculpted on the left and right side of the frame. And he's shot this as a, as a silhouette, but what I love about the shot is that he has that quintessential person walking in front of the camera, but he uses that blurred figure to serve as a contrast to the, to the figures to the left and the right. And on top of that, he uses a very slow shutter speed in order to create this really effective blur. 
So it's sort of the reverse of what we would expect. We would expect that the figure walking in the frame would be tack sharp, but the contrast that he creates here is just wonderful. And I'm sure that he, he was probably thinking of that when he purposely shot at such a slow shutter speed of a tenth of a second. With street photography, typically I will avoid shooting at such a slow shutter speed, but Thomas here made a great move by using that slow shutter speed to purposely blur the subject to create this visual contrast. If he had used a faster shutter speed, uh, that figure would be just as sharp, but I don't know if that image would be as interesting as this is. Um, I really love uh, love the shot. If if I have any small quibble, it's the fact that the the feet uh, at the bottom of the frame here are, are cut off. But that's that is a minor minor quibble. I think that he was really thoughtful in terms of building this composition and waiting for that element to help complete the frame. Much of much of uh, much of what I discussed in last week uh, last week's video was uh, was about finding the setting first and then waiting for that one gesture, that telling element to enter the frame. And I think this shot uh, does that. This is a lovely shot by Juan Maria Rodriguez. We don't have any XF information uh, on this shot, but I really love so much about this image. The first thing that strikes me is the quality of the of the light. It seems like it's either early morning or late afternoon, and it makes those blues just pop. They become just so vibrant. And uh, the cats there uh, are really defined by the, the by the shape and the patterns on the door, but it's the shadow of the horse and the lan lantern that really make make this shot. I think um, many people might not have been aware of the shadow, and I'm so glad that he was, because uh, imagine another shot, a shot of just the cat here. So if you split this frame and you just took a picture of this cat here by the door frame and didn't even see all this. It wouldn't be a particularly interesting shot. Yeah, you had a great blue door. You had a little gold lock there. You got that cat scratching. But Juan is seeing at a whole different level. He's seeing all these elements in terms of repetition of these blues from the security gate, uh, what seems to be a mailbox, the door, obviously the presence of the cats. But it's that shadow that serves as a great counterpoint to all this stuff that's happening. If the shadow wasn't here, the shot would just be okay. It would just be these two cats against these doors, not particularly interesting. Yes, great color, but the shadow just, the shadows, both of the horse and of the, and the, of the lanterns, just make this shot um, really, really nice. I just love how that shadow helps to create this contrast between this cat here and make them really pop really nicely and does sort of help lead us here to this area of the frame. You kind of see this in sort of this pattern here where you're going here, the horse's head sort of leads you here and that cat's head goes back and you kind of, this this full circle experience as we take a look at the image. Um, I'm always talking about looking for the light first and paying attention to shadows and helping that inform the, the shots that I make. And I think that Juan here does a wonderful job in doing just that. That's one of the reasons why I'm always looking at light and shadow first before before anything else in order to start building my composition. Here's a shot by Masum Khan. This was shot with a Nikon D7000 and it was shot at uh, with a 40 mil at the 40 millimeter position at F16 at 1 100th of a second at ISO 100. Um, there's uh, something remarkable about this shot is, and that's the, the depth that's created by this. Um, there are a lot of locations where you can shoot uh, near an airport where the planes are either taking off or landing. And you see a lot of shots of the of the planes taking off. But after a while, you just, you know, you've seen one, you've seen them all. But Masum here makes a, a shot that is really beautifully composed. You have a sense of depth here. It's a layered composition is what I'm saying. But you have the plane which is obviously a prominent element here against this, the clouds here. But then you have this figure right by the fence. You have this second figure here that's doing something else. And then you have this third figure that's really close to the camera. And this layered composition is, I just love it. It takes what could have been an ordinary shot of this plane taking off against these, you know, very dramatic clouds. And it makes the image 
so much more substantive. And I look at the shot, and this is the kind of shot that I'm always aspiring to make because I want to make shots that have depth to them. And these shots are really difficult to make because you just don't see it and just make one shot. You really sort of had to anticipate the overall composition and then you wait for all these elements to come into play, the plane, uh, the different figures. I can imagine that I would probably make dozens and dozens of shots just waiting for that one, one image, for that one shot where all the people are properly in their place. A couple of seconds later, and this figure here would be juxtaposed or completely overlapping this figure here or this figure here or even over the plane. There's this separation that's happening with all these figures here, which is really important to the effectiveness of the shot. And you're not going to get that from a single shot. And if you do get this shot, it's going to be more luck if you're not being thoughtful in terms of looking at the setting and really planning out the potential of what's there. And setting up your camera, composing, you know, having an idea of where you're going to place the plane, and then just keeping an eye to people walking and in and out of the frame from the left and to the right and timing it just right so that when you press that shutter release button, the people are right where they are supposed to be. You, you, you can try it with a, you know, shooting in the burst mode and shooting at 8, 10, or 15 frames per second, but I found that you really have to choose the single shot yourself. You can't just trust the motor drive to get it because a fraction of a second can make a whole difference and you don't want to depend on the camera uh, to choose that moment for you. Here's a shot by Dimitrius uh, Macri Giancanas, or Macri Giannakis. And uh, he shot this with an EOS 5D Mark II, uh, and the shutter speed was F, was 1 640th of a second at F16 at ISO 250. And uh, I, I love this shot just for all the gestures. This the, the shot of this person here, uh, who I kind of assume was like of a tour guide or something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what he's doing. But the gesture of his hands uh, into the air, the hand here pointing off to the right of the frame, and this other hand of a woman holding a man's waist. This image is a repetition of gesture. And I think that's absolutely awesome. You really need to be looking in order to make a shot like this. You really need to be patient and aware of everything that's happening in the frame because he had to see what was going on and then make all the choices to pull this off, including dropping down his camera so he wasn't standing up but getting down to about the waist level of the subject here and composing this shot so that it was just, all it had was this blue sky as a backdrop. I can imagine that at eye level, Whatever is here below the frame was likely a bunch of distractions. And um, making the choice to make it as clean as possible makes all these gestures of the hands so, so important and so effective a shot. You can see that a lot of people have faved this image and it's just beautifully, beautifully crafted. But this is, this is kind of what I'm talking about in terms of moving beyond the cliches. At some point, you really start to have to pay attention. And one of the reasons I do this YouTube channel is I want to show you and showcase images that are really pushing what's possible with street photography to encourage you to really think about, you know, what you can do the next time you're out making images yourself. And then lastly, we have this shot by Jay Perez. He shot this with a Panix, Panasonic's, Panasonic LX3, a uh, shutter speed of 1,000th of a second at f4 and ISO 80. And this is just a boy uh, playing ball against the wall. How many times have, have you seen this or, or done it yourself when you were a kid where you're just bouncing a ball off of a wall? And this shot is, is really, really neat. And it breaks a lot of rules. If you look at it in terms of the architecture, you're getting all this distortion because he's using a fairly wide angle lens. And so you're getting all these lines that are sort of bowing into each other. Uh, but that doesn't seem to matter. And, and also the, the composition of the camera, the orientation of the camera is not parallel to the plane that they're shooting on. So it's a little off kilter, but I think it adds something because you have all these strong diagonal lines that are created as a result that create a, a certain level of tension in the shot. And then 
the boy playing with the ball in the shade and the ball's shadow on the on the wall just adds this remarkable gesture to the entire shot. Imagine this shot without the boy and the ball. It would be a nothing shot. It would be interesting in terms of lighting, in terms of shadow, in terms of shape, but it wouldn't be what this shot is. And this shot, I think, is really, really exceptional for him not only, you know, recognizing it, but but maximizing the power of it in respect with his timing. You know, this boy's bouncing this ball, and he could have shot this at any time, but he kind of waited for that moment where the ball was in the air and he could get the shadow in against the wall there as well. If the ball was into the shadow or the body language of the boy was much different, it wouldn't be effective. Imagine if he had shot this with the boy juxtaposed against the door. You would lose the detail of maybe the boy's shirt, even his head, against this dark area. Right here, there's a perfect separation of his body against the the, the house, and uh, it, it makes it work. And I really love the shadow, the sort of like triangle that exists here from from a, a nearby roof line being cast again, uh, around this around this boy. It it works beautifully, and all of these shots, I think, exemplify a careful and a developed way of seeing. I don't know if these photographers are able to do this consistently or not. That's the goal. As photographers, we always want to be able to do that. But it begins with starting to really challenge ourselves and not saying, oh, okay, I made this shot of this door of this person walking down the street before. Let me do it again because I know I'm, I'm, I'm good at it. Um, it's not a good way to go. Um, so take a look at the images that uh, I've been highlighting in the, in the video and please take the time to comment on the work that you really, really like. Cause I think people want to be encouraged, uh, not just by a star that says, Hey, you know, nice work, but, but taking the comment to just say, Hey, this is why I like this photograph and really draw inspiration from, from these images. If, if you see a picture there that you don't think you could make, make it a challenge of yourself this weekend or this week to try and create something like that yourself and move beyond the cliches, move beyond what you typically are used to creating with your own photographs. So if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe. Uh, we, are, we produce these videos uh, each week, or at least we try to. And if you found us for the first time and you've never heard of the Candid Frame podcast, visit thecandidframe.com where I have interviews with over 260 uh, photographers from all genres of photography. If you have a passion for photography, this is the show for you. So thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.